Have you ever picked up an old item, like an old tool or a pocket knife, uh, maybe a gun, or climbed in the seat of an old pickup truck, and you kind of had a nostalgia that came back to you? It just took you back to a place when times were simpler? Well, that's what this revolver is to me. This revolver in no way, shape, or form fits in my collection at all, except that it's old. But when I saw it in the gun shop, I couldn't pass it up. Something about this, the character that it has, drew me to it. And once I picked it up and put it in my hands, it was like going back to a simpler time. I could imagine going fishing, walking in the woods, hunting, plinking, shooting at random trash like pop cans and bottles and things like that. And immediately I fell in love with this revolver. This is an H&R Model 922. This is a 9-shot 22 long rifle revolver. This one in particular has a 6-inch barrel, and it's double action, single action. It's a fairly light, lightweight revolver because the frame is thin, but it is a full-size frame. You get this nice big plastic grip. And um, these are pretty collectible. They're not worth a whole lot of money, but they're very collectible because there are a ton of different variants of these throughout the years. Uh, this particular one with the serial number puts it around 1951. Um, and it's in really good shape. You can tell it's been used. You can tell it's been carried and shot quite a bit, but it's in really good shape overall. And so what we'll do is we'll kind of go through this. We'll talk about how it shoots, how it carries, and um, why I like it so much. So guys, with that, let's get started. So as mentioned, one of the things that this took me back to was plinking. Um, as a kid, I used to plink quite a bit with 22 rifle and then later on a little 22 single action revolver. And this took me back to that time frame. If it was trash that couldn't be burned, like aluminum cans and those pie pans and things like that, I was shooting it on the weekend. And this took me right back to those days. The difference is, is this is a lot better quality revolver than what I had. Uh, this one, while not expensive, nor were they ever expensive, it is very well made. Uh, the quality of it is good. The finish, this one, you know, being as old as it is, has held up relatively well for being used quite a bit. And the grips are in good shape. And uh, the timing on it, the lockup, all that stuff, I mean, it's it's golden. Uh, you can ask for a better double single action 22 revolver, particularly in this price range. This gun is very shootable. Uh, with it having a 6-inch barrel, you get plenty of sight radius, and the sights are actually pretty nice. Um, they're standard fare for back in the day. Uh, you've got your standard blade style front sight post, which is thin. And then you've got a gutter or trench rear sight. Um, not adjustable, but they're on. Uh, the only thing that I had to kind of work with a little bit was that instead of burying the front sight and the trench like you do on a lot of revolvers, I found that I had to leave some of this up out of the gutter, if that makes sense. Um, in order to hit my target. But the windage was dead on, and once I figured out how to hold, this thing was awesome. The size of this revolver makes it really easy to shoot. As mentioned, you know, you get the full frame, um, but it's thin. So it's pretty lightweight. It's very well balanced, and you still get a nice full grip when that comes into play when you are using the trigger, both in double action and single action. And so while we're talking about the trigger, what's it like to shoot? Well, the trigger is really, really good for an inexpensive 22. The double action pull is probably right around 10 pounds. Very clean, very smooth, not a whole lot of stacking. And then the single action is okay. It could be better, but it's not bad. It's probably about six to seven pounds. And it's very predictable, which is good. I will take that over a light, unpredictable trigger. But the thing about these are they're different than most other revolvers or handguns, and that's because this little nub right here is what actually lets the hammer down. So when you pull this, you're actually not going to break the trigger until you push that, and then it'll release the hammer. And so in single action, that does kind of affect it. Um, you have a little bit of play until you get to that, and then it's nice and crisp and clean. But it's not as fine-tuned as like a Ruger uh, single six or something like that. The double action, however, you don't really notice that. And it is just wonderful. I actually prefer shooting this in double action over single action. I, I really like the double action trigger, and it's predictable. You can feel where that's going to break. 
And like I said, the weight, in my opinion, just the way this is with the size of the grip and everything, is perfect. I certainly wouldn't change it. The capacity on this is another really good thing. Uh, you get nine shots of 22, which, God forbid, you had to use this for some kind of self-defense from a critter or something like that. You've got nine rounds of 22 long rifle, so unlike a single six or most other 22 revolvers on the market, um, especially for back then, you, you get a little extra firepower. Also, it keeps you from having as many loose rounds in your pocket if you decide to hunt with this. So, really well designed, really well thought out, especially, you know, for the trapper or the hunter or, um, you know, the woodsman. Really nice gun. The downsides to this are going to be the loading process. As you saw in the beginning, it's, it's kind of different. Um, this doesn't have a swing out cylinder. You're going to push this little button right here. And then the cylinder just falls out and it'll fall out of either side so you got to be aware of that especially when you're reloading it um, once it's empty you're gonna push this out and this is in this variation not all of them have this so again I mentioned there's different variations of these and they're all fairly collectible because of that but not all of them have that feature some of them you may have to come in and individually poke them out like you do on the North American uh, firearms revolvers but this one and i think most of them have this feature where you're able to push down and knock the casings out um, that's fine and dandy except if you're using cheap ammo like the uh remington or it's thunder something i can't remember what it is i'll roll it in but those really stick and the majority of the time you end up having to poke them out individually because it takes too much force to overcome this with those but if you're using quality ammo it's no problem. Reloading is a huge pain in the butt because you're left with three pieces and then you've got to somehow hold this and load them back in. And in the field, if you don't have a holster, that can be kind of a pain. But I found if you just tuck the revolver underneath your arm um, after you've reinserted this pin, which again, you have to push this down to reinsert, uh, tuck this under your shoulder and then your hands are free to reload uh, and then pull it back out. I use this hand to kind of cradle the cylinder, and then this guy goes back in. So not the best in the world for reloading by any means, but again, you get those nine shots, so uh, you know, it is what it is. I found that if you have a holster, it makes life easier because you can put the uh, revolver in the holster when you're reloading. So no big deal, but just understand it does have its shortcomings. Along with that, the holster that this came with is certainly not the best holster and would not have been my first choice, but it's old, and I think it's been with the gun for decades, and it's still in pretty good shape. So I cleaned it up. There's a lot of corrosion in here. Um, I cleaned it up, put some ballastol on the leather, and I'm using it again, but certainly wouldn't be my first choice to go out and buy for a holster, but it matches the gun extremely well. I think they've been together for a long time, and I'm just going to continue to use this holster because it is still very serviceable. What else about this thing? Well, it rides on the hip really well uh, for being a six-inch barrel revolver. Um, again, due to the light weight because of the, fr the frame, you forget you have it, honestly. This gun carries extremely well. Um, obviously, I think concealed carry is probably a little out of question, but... If you got the 4-inch or the even shorter barrel version, you, you certainly could if you wanted to. I don't know why you would, but it's an option. Um, but yeah, I mean, the gun, it shoots well. It carries well. I really like it. I think for a woods gun, it makes a lot of sense. If you wanted a squirrel hunt or rabbit hunt with it, it is more than accurate to do it. I don't know that I'm accurate enough to achieve those kind of results, but the gun certainly is. And due to the size, it lends itself to shooting pretty well. Um, and with practice, I'm sure I could get better. Also, it does have a serrated trigger, which is kind of a, a, a bonus, I guess, to most people. It definitely took extra work to machine that. And then it has this kind of loading gate here. And I'm not an H&R guy. Th this thing does not belong in my collection by any means. I just had to have it. But it does kind of have a loading gate here. I don't know what good that does because you can't unload and load these through here. It doesn't line up correctly. And it's not really a good sight indicator because your live rounds are up here and it rotates this way. So, um, you know, take it for what it is. I imagine that this frame was probably used on other revolvers that maybe had different features. But that's just my guess. Again, I'm, I'm not an H&R guy. Um, not that there's anything wrong with them. I've just never been into them. So 
anyway, this is a local gun shop find. I had no intent of buying this, and I couldn't resist, especially for the price. Sub $200, comes with a holster, American made, old school quality. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take that home. So, uh, guys, if you see one of these, pick it up, especially if you don't have one. You know, if this isn't something that you'd normally get, I think for the price, uh, particularly if, if it's somewhere close to what I paid or even a little bit more, um, I would take it home. It's kind of like an old pocket knife, something like this. This is an old uh, Ulster scout style pocket knife. I think this thing was like 12 bucks and it is better than any modern pocket knife you can go buy today for $12. Needed a little bit of cleanup, kind of like this guy. Needed a little bit of TLC, but once it was taken care of, it's a very usable, well-made American knife and American tool, just like this. So guys, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Drop comments down below for me if you would. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff um, if you want to. And um, as always, and most importantly, stay free. Mm -hmm.